So we are here and we're about to do a field trip to what is called Next Fab Studio. So this is a rapid manufacturing facility here in Philadelphia. It's what they call a clubhouse for nerds. So this is a place nerds can come and they can manufacture, they can create stuff, things like this. So when we talk about rapid manufacturing, what we're talking about is rapidly being able to create items out of metal, out of wood, being able to do 3D printed, additive printing, being able to use lasers to cut and edge items, 2D printing, textile printing, all that kind of stuff. So Next Fab Studio, what this is, is basically this is a membership based uh, facility where you pay $130 per month and you can come in and you can use all of the equipment. They've got co-working facilities, they've got full-time professional staff to actually show you how to use all the equipment in here properly and make sure that you're doing things in the most efficient manner. This is the type of place you can come to and if you're thinking about creating a company, if you're trying to thinking about trying to create a product, this is a place that you can come to to figure out how to create the initial prototypes of the product and not only that but also to create the initial run of a product. So if you decide to create a widget, I don't know, something like this, you can come here, you can learn how to create something like this, you can create the prototype of this and then if somebody decides, hey, you know, you go to Spencer's or you can go to some store and they say, hey, we want to buy a thousand, you can come in here and you can you can actually create your initial run of a thousand to make sure that you have a viable business idea. So with Next Fab Studio, they provide you all of these things. So again, not only can you learn how to do rapid manufacturing, not only can you prototype with rapid manufacturing, but you can also create a small business using their facility. So we're going to go in today and we're going to take a look at all of their equipment and see what all the amazing things are that they have to offer. So we're starting our here, tour here at the Next Fab Studios and we are in the metal shop. So the big thing with Next Fab Studios is again, we are talking about doing rapid manufacturing. One of the big things that they want people to be able to do here is actually be able to start their own businesses. So a lot of times when you think about coming to a facility like this, you're thinking about, okay, well maybe I can make a prototype. Maybe I can make my initial design and then I'm going to have to go somewhere else to start manufacturing an item. With uh, Next Fab, Studio, what they want you to be able to do is they want you to be able to come here, they want you to be able to learn uh, how to use all of this different types of equipment to create your first prototype and then actually be able to create your first run of whatever product it is you're trying to sell. So if you were, you were trying to, to create metal components, that you would be able to create those components, sell those components to the point that you understand what market demand is so that you can grow your business and actually outsource to some, that to somebody else uh, once you know that the business will succeed. So right now we are in the metal shop. So again, a lot of times you guys, you know, when you're thinking about computers, when you're thinking about technology, what are you guys thinking about, man? You're thinking about PCs, you're thinking about servers, you're thinking about Active Directory, you're thinking about Cisco, you're thinking about a lot of stuff that frankly is 13 years old. That is, that's, that's a decade ago. Modern computers, modern technology is being used in facilities like this and facilities like this are going to be churning out far more wealth and money than people simply trying to do client server architecture design maintenance so on and so forth so this is the metal shop I'm gonna uh, take you around and we're gonna do a little videotaping of the different types of equipment here so you understand what they are doing what they are capable of and so you can start to get an idea of what you might want to do in the future so the first thing that we're taking a look at here is the CNC lathe. So a lathe, what a lathe does is it spins around really fast with material in the middle. And then what happens is you can either use a tool to carve away material as it spins around or a drill to drill into it. So that's a normal lathe. The CNC lathe is computer numeric control. What that means is basically this is attached to a computer and it runs through a program. So you can put in one item Item, have this lathe create that item then you just put in another uh, stock uh, piece of uh, material and it will continually recreate uh, whatever it is that you told it to create so this is an item just so you understand what a lathe does is if you see the top here it's carved away the different bits it's put a little nick in the side basically that is what uh, the lathe allows you to do now one of the cool things with the lathe and with this this computerized manufacturing is something called lights out manufacturing what that 
that means is that they, you can actually have robots feeding tools like this from a stock of material. What happens then is the technicians, the factory workers, come in, they make sure that the robots are all stocked with, uh, with new material, they make sure the right programs are in the lathe, they turn on the robots, they make sure the robots are doing what they're supposed to do, and then they literally turn off the lights and they can walk away. That is how precise using something like, like a CNC lathe can be. You can literally, you decide whatever widget is you want to create and it will create a thousand, five thousand, ten thousand, a hundred thousand of them, basically as long as it continuously gets fed uh, whatever material it is it needs to create that item. So let's go over, there's something called the CNC router that actually can carve the, the individual items that aren't uh, circular. So now if you want to be creating flat metal components, you come over to one of these CNC routers, or this is more aptly called a CNC mill. So what this does is it creates items like this. So imagine that for whatever reason, you need lots and lots and lots of flat metal pieces carved in a specific way. That is what this CNC mill would do. So you have this bed here that basically what's called, it moves on the X, Y axis, so basically moves front and back and left and right. And then there is a spinning tool up here at the top. That tool comes down and then the, uh, the part moves on this bed so that it gets carved out. One of the cool things with a CNC mill is that there's actually, I think they said 24 or 25 different tools up here that can automatically be switched out. So if you have a program and whatever item it is you're trying to create requires different tools, while this thing is running, it will actually automatically swap out the tools and have it come down uh, to, to produce the item. So that, this is what's called the CNC mill, and that's what it, it, it does. The cool part with this, and again, why you guys need to be understanding this as technology professionals, is so you're looking at this big industrial piece of equipment and you're going, Eli, what the hell does this have to do with servers? Ah, all right. But what you need to understand is that computers drive this. So a computer is connected to this. I, there's a specific piece of software that makes this thing run. And then there is an additional module that you purchase to make this do what it is you need to do. So when you're looking at items like this, don't like go, ah, Eli, I can't do it. It's too big. It's too expensive. What am I supposed to do with this? Right? Because it's really easy to look at a PC. It's really easy to look at a smartphone or tablet and go, oh, I can fix that. But when you start looking at these really big things, you, you start getting a little scared. Just realize this very large piece of an industrial equipment all gets run from a computer that gets run through software that has configuration files that are dumped into it. And so all this, all this is, is a very expensive peripheral to a computer. So let's go over and look at some of the other stuff that they have here in this really cool metal shop. Now the next cool part is this five axis water jet. So if you want to go out and you want to uh, produce pretty intricate metal or wood components, you can use this five axis water jet to do it. So if you look here at this logo for Next Lab, this is the type of thing that this five axis water jet can do. So it was able to do this, it was able to do this little stencil type thing, and it was able to do this item, which is either a flower or a, uh, a propeller, depending on, on, on type of person you are, what, what you think. Now the cool part with this, so the part with the, 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 the water jet is the water jet actually carves metal and other materials using water going at supersonic speed with sand abrasive mixed in. That's, that's how it actually goes through and it's able to cut the material. What makes the five axis water jet cool is a normal water jet is, is only one axis, basically it can only shoot straight down. So it can only, you may move, be able to move it around, but it only shoots straight down. The cool part with this is as you can see, it's able, actually able to make three dimensional cuts. So that's what makes the, the five axis water jet look cool. So with that, basically we're gonna have, the, have the, uh, the technician here turn it on and we can see how this thing actually does its job, which is really, really, really cool. You have the center of the, the end there, that triangle. And then the, the base of the X has another triangle.
And of course, you know, if we are going to be making metal components, you know, it, really cool robotic computerized uh, tools are awesome, but at the end of the day, a lot of times you need to go back and use the tools that frankly they were using 80 years ago. So this is where they have the drills, this is where they have the cutters, this is where they have all the, the, the other types of manual tools that you would use in order to finish off a product. Again, they've got an entire shop here, so we're not gonna go through all of them, but basically understand that even in a rapid manufacturing facility, where it's all about really cool cutting edge technology that is going to change the entire world, guess what? They still got equipment here that's basically built on 80 year old designs. And of course though, it being in the metal shop, you know, it's, it's really cool to be able to cut and be able to round and be able to lathe and all that, but at the end of the day, sometimes you actually gotta be able to join components together. And again, this goes back to old fashioned technology, nothing really cool and fancy here, but they do have their whole own little welding facility so that they have all the equipment. So once you create the parts, you can then weld them together so that you have an overall component. So whenever you think about modern manufacturing, of course, you know, we're thinking about the metal stuff, right? When I'm talking about having computerized robots build metallic objects, you're like, yeah, Eli, that's cool. When we talk about 3D printing, you're like, yeah, Eli, that's cool. When we talk about laser printing, etching in and carving stuff, you think, yeah, man, that's the future. Well, the, the, one of the oldest building materials, wood, is still very useful to use for many people. So again, when you're starting to think about things like rapid manufacturing, don't simply be thinking about the new stuff, you know, no, you know, metal and 3D printing and all of that, but you can also be thinking about wood. So here at Fab Lab Studio, they actually have an entire wood shop so that you can prototype and actually manufacture wood items. So that's one of the really cool things that's here. So this is the CNC wood router. So we showed you the CNC metal mill out there and that was used to create metal items. Now if you're, you're creating wood items, you would use this CNC wood router. So what's really cool with this is that you can create what is kind of called two and a half dimensional items. So if you want to create a stencil out of wood like this, this is something that you can do. And this is probably one of those things you're thinking about, yeah, Eli, I understand that, that's kind of cool. But with this two and a half dimensional, uh, what this can do is this actually routes out, not simply a stencil like this, but if you look at something like this, you can see that it's it looks almost like a three-dimensional item. So you can see all the curves, you can see where it carves in, you can see where it did all that stuff. So this is what is called a CNC wood router. And again, this essentially plugs into a computer that is running CAD and some other specialized software. That computer is what drives this to allow you to make wacky things such as this item here. And just like the metal shop, not only do they have the computerized robotic CNC wood router, but they also have all of the other tools that your grandpa would have been able to use, you know, a hundred years ago. So they've got the table saw, they've got the bandsaw, they've got the drill, they have got all that equipment. Because again, remember, whenever you're dealing with, like I say, this rapid manufacturing environment, just because you're using all the new tools doesn't mean you're not going to be using some of this old stuff too. So uh, the next Fab Studio definitely has all of this equipment so that they have a really, really, really nice wood shop here. Now remember, when you're doing things like manufacturing, it's not just simply important to be able to cut out items, it's not simply important to be able to fuse items, but at the end of the day, you want the items to look pretty, right? They, they, they have to look aesthetically pleasing. So this, this place, this rapid manufacturing facility, would not, would be incomplete if it didn't have a paint room. So they do have a fully industrial paint room here so that you can paint your items once you've actually created them. They've got this, this is a whole uh, venting system so basically this is all you know per OSHA per NIOSH for whatever standards so they have the air circulation going through these uh, filters behind me actually ca capture all that paint vapor so once you create your items you can come in here and make sure they look pretty before you go off to sell them now one of the things that really puts an icing on the cake for this fab lab studio is they've even got a wet lab which sounds honestly to me it sounds really cool and kind of like a bad idea all at the same time. But basically, if you are skilled and somehow you get enough permission to do it, you can actually come in here to use their equipment to work with chemicals. So if you're doing 
I don't know what the hell you're doing with chemicals, but you're mixing chemicals and you're trying to create the next great chemical concoction. They even have a wet lab in here to try to help you do that. So in this 21,000 foot facility, so far we've seen the metal shop, the wood shop, the paint bay, and the, 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 the wet lab area. That is just on the first floor out of this 21,000 square feet. So we're going to go upstairs, and upstairs we're going to see the three-dimensional printing and a lot of the other cool stuff they have. So here we are up on the second floor, and this is the type of thing that you guys are probably going to recognize more and go, oh, now I understand what Eli's talking about. So up here on the second floor, they've got a co-working facility, they've got textile, so you can actually print and do cool things on textile, they've got their 3D printing, they've got their laser engraving, they've got their 2D printing, they actually have office spaces for an incubator for up to five companies to come in here, and they can actually start their companies here. They've also got an electronics lab, so those are the things that we're going to be taking a look at now. So as we're looking at rapid manufacturing, the things we have to look at is the different applications, the different things we can do. So you know us, me being a man, right? You know, I'm thinking about metal, I'm thinking about wood, I'm thinking about 3D printing. Well, something to keep in mind now is actually in textiles and in sewing, they have a lot of new cool technology. So this in fact is a computerized sewing machine and what can happen is you load in the program and it will be able to create all of these designs for you. So again, this is one of those things that you have to be thinking about as a modern technologist is you guys keep wanting to sell, frankly, to the mail establishment. You keep wanting to sell, you know, servers. You keep wanting to sell clients. You keep wanting to sell all that kind of stuff. Something to think about is these other types of devices that you may be able to sell these items to other people that you might not be thinking about. Your mom, your grandma, other people. I mean, again, you probably don't think about sewing and computers, but in fact, in the modern world, sewing and computers go hand in hand. So in their textile facility, just like we saw in the metal shop, just like we saw in the wood shop, not only are they using cutting edge, state of the art technology, but they're also using the stuff that again, your grandfather or grandmother would have, would have been comfortable using 80 years ago. So again, with the textile shop, they have this industrial sewing machine. They also have other, other types of equipment here for sewing. And this allows them to do things like create this handbag. So this is a leather handbag. It has a, uh, a, a logo on it, you may not be able to see. This was leather et or, uh, laser etched over in their laser facility, and then using this industrial sewing machine, they were able to sew it all together. So again, just like with all the other shops here, not only do they have the really, really high-tech equipment, but they have the good old standbys too. So of course in rapid manufacturing, electronics are a big deal, right? You know, everything nowadays is an electronic device. Um, so here, again, at Fab Lab Studios, they also have a full electronic shop. So they've got oscilloscopes, they've got soldering irons, they've got the multimeters, they've got everything you need to actually be able to put all the components together if you're creating electronic devices. So here we are in the 3D printing or the additive printing facility here. Now additive printing or 3D printing allows you to print three dimensional items. So these two items here were actually printed in a device as they are. So you see this frame that looks like it has chain mail in it. These are not individual components that were put together later. This was actually printed as a solid piece. Also with this, I don't know, whatever it is, as you can see, it's fully three-dimensional, and this was simply the, the idea or the program, was the CAD file was put into a printer, and this is what came out 30 minutes or an hour later. So when we're talking about additive printing, what we're talking about is printing 3D physical uh, items. So this 3D printer, how it prints is it extrudes ABS plastic. So what happens is you put in the CAD file and then it goes through and it additive, it continuously adds layer of plastic. One of the nice parts with this is that it also prints a support structure. So one of the questions you may be having is like, well, Eli, what if I am printing an odd three-dimensional object? You know, I print it up to a certain height and then it's odd and so it tips over and that's not gonna work, right? Well, the way you deal with that is you all also print a support structure. So not only are you print printing the item itself, but you're printing a support structure so it doesn't tip over in the middle of the process. So when you're looking at something like this, basically we pull out the table, we can see that these little whatever knobs or whatever they are, this is a type of thing that can be printed out of this type of particular 3D printer. 
as with all technologies, there's multiple ways of, of doing any type of project that you're thinking about doing. So what this 3D printer does is it actually uses this, the color bonding agent and gypsum powder in order to create multi-color objects. So this is not painted. All these colors, yellow, green, orange, all of that, these colors was when this, uh, when this thing was creating the item, those were the colors that was actually bonded to the material during that printing process. Now, if you're thinking about playing around with 3D printing yourself, they also have these what are called rep wraps here. So these are actually $1,000 uh, 3D printing devices to allow you to create three-dimensional items. So this is a really, really, really nice tool if you just want to play around in this genre. If you're like, hmm, 3D printing sounds interesting, sounds cool, but I'm nowhere near Philadelphia, but I would like to start playing with it. Well, they also, like I say, they have these rep wrap devices that you can actually by yourself. So when it goes through and it prints, prints the items like it's doing right now, one of the nice things with these rep wraps is that it's fairly inexpensive to do. So the items that I showed you before are actually kind of expensive. It was like $50 for those three little items that I showed you because even though you're printing the, material, the, the items yourself, you have to pay for the material that it's getting printed out of, right? So that particular ABS plastic is pretty expensive. Now, if you use something like the RipRap, it's able to use a less expensive plastic. So an item this big actually comes out to only being about 25 cents worth of material. Just like any kinds of printers, you know, there's different resolutions and different qualities. So that first 3D printer I showed you has a lot better resolution and a lot better quality but the printer itself is going to be very expensive and the material is going to be expensive. With something like this RepRap, again, you yourself could buy one of these things for a thousand bucks and be printing little items for 25 cents. If you don't want to spend the money and you're in the Philadelphia area though, they do have these here and they're here just for you to play with. So in rapid manufacturing, when we're talking about laser printers, we're not talking about the printers that are sitting on your desk. We're talking about printers that actually have lasers in them in order to either cut or engrave material. So this was printed out of one of these industrial laser printers that they have here. So this is able to cut into wood, it's able to cut into plastic and actually cut out these designs. It's also able to engrave. So if you're looking at this and you see that engraved on here, so it's able to engrave metal and it's able to engrave uh, engrave glass. So all you do is you put the item in, you feed in the CAD specifications, and then away it goes and you get whatever it is, uh, you know, five CAD file you put in. So now we're in the 2D printing area. So not only can you pre print 3D items, not only can you use lasers to print items, but you can just print really big pictures and stickers and magnets and that kind of thing. So this is what is called a vinyl cutting printer. And this is really cool because what happens with this is this can actually print in full color onto vinyl but also cut out the vinyl at the same time. So if you're going to be printing, let's say, vinyl stickers, so you're going to be printing bumper sticker, something like that, this is able to print the, uh, the actual picture onto the vinyl and then cut out that picture at the exact time. So when this comes out, you get a whole roll of whatever pictures it is and you can peel them off just like stickers. So you can use this to do anything in vinyl, whether it's bumper stickers like I was talking about. You can use this to do car wraps that are done in vinyl. You're able to do this vinyl magnet. So if you're gonna be printing out uh, like promotional magnets for a client, this is, that's something that this can do. So this is a vinyl cutting printer and it's one of the really cool items here. So of course, with all these other kinds of printing that are going on, at the end of the day, they also just have the good old fashioned, but massively cool printer. So if you're gonna be printing out posters, if you're going to be point printing out fine art artistic work, they have this Epson printer here to allow you to do that. So with this, this is something that you could use in order to print very large photographic posters that you could then sell or put on your wall.
so finally, we've seen all of these really cool places where you can manufacture really cool items. So we've seen the metal manufacturing, the wood manufacturing, we've seen the paint shop, we've seen the wet lab, we've seen the 3D printing, the laser printing, the other printing, the this printing, the textile printing. But of course, you know, in any facility, not only do you need to be able to work on equipment, but sometimes you just need to be able to sit down and think about things. So that's one of the nice things here is that they also have this co-working space. So they have numerous tables and chairs and allow you to just sit down and think about whatever it is you're going to do. They also have a computer lab in the back so you can sit down and work on all of those CAD designs before you actually sit down at any piece of equipment to actually start uh, manufacturing anything. They have lockers at the back so they don't have a lot of storage space here. Honestly, you know, this is not something where you're going to come with your own desk and a whole bunch of your own equipment, but if you have your own little toolkit, if you have some items, they also have a locker space to rent and as I talked about when we first came up here, they have five offices that are part of their incubator. So if you are trying to develop a company and you're thinking, hey, I have a really great idea for some kind of woodworking company or some kind of 3D uh, printing company, you can come here, you can work out of here for three to seven months. You've got your, your own office space where you've got 24 seven access. So you can work out of the office, then come out here, use all the equipment as it's available and really try to grow whatever it is you're doing. So basically, you know, with this facility, it gives you everything you need to really start your company. So again, you know, we're, we're talking about manufacturing in America. They, they talk about manufacturing in America is dead, right? But mass commodity manufacturing is something that is difficult to do. But as I will say, as a business owner, many of us need small little widgets. We all know widgets. We all know items that we would be willing to buy, that we would be willing to pay very good money for that simply have not been manufactured, simply have not been created. So with places like this, people can come here to design and develop those highly niche items and create businesses around them. So so that we all benefit. So this is a really, really, really cool facility and I'm happy I've been able to uh, do the tour here today. So that was a tour of the Next Fab Studio. So this is a rapid manufacturing facility that allows you to come in and use all of these amazing tools so that you can figure out how to do whatever it is you need to do in the world. So whether you need to manufacture metal items, wood items, you need a 3D print, you need a laser print, you need a 2D print, you need to do textiles, it has an incubator, even all of this stuff is here at Next Lab Studio. Now if you're interested in becoming a member, you know, you're looking at all this equipment Equipment. And this equipment is expensive. I mean, there's hundreds and hundreds, probably millions of dollars of stuff in here. Plus, it's a big facility, 21,000 square feet, plus co-working space, plus all that stuff. You'll be surprised to know it only costs $130 a month to join uh, Next Fab Studio. And so when you do that, you can come in, you get access to the facility, and you get access to all their equipment. Of course, you know, as with everything, there's a caveat and some equipment costs more to use and blah, 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 blah. But in general, you can come in here if you're in the Philadelphia area and use this place for $130 a month. This is the type of amazing resource that is available that many people don't know about. Again, I am in the, uh, the startup community, the tech community in the Baltimore area. Philadelphia is only, what, 70, 80 miles away, I, and I honestly did not know about this facility only a month ago. So if you're out there and you're thinking about trying to create your company, trying to figure out what you're going to do, really look in your area and see if they have facilities like this because you can get an amazing amazing amount of equipment, you can get amazing access to resources that there is no way you could touch unless you actually became a member of something like this. So again, this is the Next Lab Studio, only $130 a month, and uh, I can tell you, <laughs> if I wasn't a Baltimore person, I would definitely come up here and join this place. So uh, so as always, it was great to, uh, to be able to tape this video, it was great to be able to do this field trip up here in Philly, and uh, I look forward to seeing you at the next one.